High on Life is a semi-linear first-person shooter. It's set in the goofy far reaches of the galaxy where Earth has been invaded by the G3 cartel and they're capturing and selling humans as a galactic party drug that they uh, smoke, I think. It's something like that. Anyways, at the start of the invasion, the player finds an alien-controlled living gun named Kenny who hails from the planet of Gatlius, and he is a, a Gatlian. Gatlians will be a main focus in the game. They're the guns that you unlock as part of your progress, and they are what you're going to be using to kill all the insane enemies that you're going to run across in the game. Kenny reveals to the player that Gatlians have been enslaved by the G3 cartel. Uh, they've been recruited as guns, and this kind of sets into motion the player having uh, his and his sister's entire house warped to intergalactic Blim City. Here the player is going to meet a retired bounty hunter named Gene, who annoys the shit. Um, he assists us in obtaining a bounty hunting power suit, and his main role in the game is to act as like the office guy. He collects information for us, he retrieves bounties for us, he puts them up on the the module, the screen, the big screeny thing for you to be able to go into and select bounties. And all these bounties are key leaders, key players in the G3 cartel. This will travel across multiple different planets. We're going to hunt and fight all these leaders in some pretty epic boss fights while we're defeating hordes of just like low level goons along the way. This play style is very akin to old school boomer shooters. It's just a story. Uh, that gets most of the way hashed out, and it ends up concluding with the player fighting the leader of the G3 named Garmantuous. You'll see his boss fight on the screen the entire time I'm going over this review of the game. My name is Clay, and when I'm not working, being a dad, running up and down mountains chasing animals and fish, I play games with the very little free time that I have, and I've kicked off a new idea where I'm going to play a game, and stream the entire thing and when i'm done streaming it on youtube where you can watch the entire playthrough for the most part i'll pop up a review of it where i go over a few points that i think are important when you're somebody who doesn't have a whole lot of time to play a game and you want to know is this game worth the small amount of time that i have to play so enjoy the review and let me know what you think down in the comments and if you like the review maybe leave me a sub hit the bell that way you can see whenever i live stream whatever game i'm playing at the time Let's get in to High on Life. Also, if you're curious, here's the template I'm using for the review. So there will be timestamps down in the scroll bar if you want to know exactly what part I'm at. So performance is the first tab there. Performance wise, I am running on a PC. I am using something that's probably way overkill for a 1080p system. I'm running this game with an RTX 3080, a 10600K processor 32 gigabytes of ram it's really overbuilt for a 1080p 60 fps system but as far as performance goes i thought it was really good i didn't notice any big fps drop off so if you're a pc player and you have anything above like a 1070 graphics card you can expect this game to run maxed out at 60 fps console guys i did do a little bit of digging i found spotted reports on old gen consoles ps4s and xbox ones where people talked about slight frame lag but nothing serious nothing that's going to make the game unplayable and if you do decide to run the game maxed out on a pc the graphics are actually pretty damn awesome blim city the mushroom valley earth the slums everywhere in the game looks cool and there's tons of easter eggs and little hidden references that give the game a lot of life and the civilians and all the player models in the game look really good and there's not a whole lot of interaction with most of these civilians but they all seem to have their own little lives going on and they seem to be going about their day. So if you're a fan of that cartoonish art style that Rick and Morty has, uh, which Justin Roiland was a, the maker of this game, so you'll really get along with it if you enjoy Rick and Morty. This is kind of akin to that cartoonish art style. But like I said, the game looks fantastic. It's certainly not a realism game, but every little detail as far as like when you're looking at the guns, the antennas are moving, the little flappers on the end of the gun are always moving you can watch the needles go out of sweezy's head whenever she's firing and everything i mean everything looks great the guns are blinking like in this footage you can see les do it blinking it everything is really well made there's nothing that really got shorted here the only thing i can say 
is that the civilians, while they walk around and they do a bunch of stuff, I do wish they had a little more life in their face. They're all just kind of deadpan staring at you as you're walking around Blim City. But as far as the enemy modeling, you really never get super, super close to them, but everything that you do see on them looks really cool as far as their armor, their weapons, the interactions they have with the environment, everything looks really well made. And while the game looks fantastic, I think the audio does suffer in some departments. Uh, your super suit doesn't really have any cool audio in the movement department as far as your jetpack noises, which you can use to dash around, you can power slide around things. I wish the jetpack had more action to it, I guess is the best way to say it. It's just really underwhelming for me. Another note on the super suit, your footsteps aren't really noticeable when you're walking around if you're on a metal surface a wooden surface a dirt surface it all just sounds the same I guess I can say the same thing for the guns the guns don't really have a whole lot of punch like a uh, Gus your shotgun you would think he would have a lot of noise and punch to his report but it's just really not there and they all have their own cartoony glob alien gun sound vibes and they fit that bill but you won't really remember the sound of the guns. They're just not super impactful. Where this game really shines in the audio department is the voice lines. They're crisp, they're super well acted. The look of every gun really fits the voice that they're given. And the best acting you'll hear in the game probably comes from Pseudo, which is the AI that controls and allows access to your bounty hunter suit and all of its abilities. He sounds awesome. His line delivery is hilarious, especially when he's in detective mode. And he's a fun character. He was probably my favorite part of the audio in the game. Control wise, the game is super well made. It's got basic FPS controls. I played this game on mouse and keyboard. I can't say anything about the controller world, but I researched a little. I didn't see anyone complaining about the controls, but having the power slide and the parkour movements in the game were wonderful touches and they make getting around so much more fun and so much easier, especially the power slide. Uh, my biggest advice with controlling movement in the game is remember that you can use all of that movement that you unlock throughout the game in combat. And once you start using all of it, the fight gets way easier. Overall, the gameplay is smooth, the platforming's fun, and everything from the controls to the performance to the audio, it all brings together the game into a really enjoyable experience. And I only had a few instances of not really knowing where to go to continue, but I blame that more on my lack of common sense and my sidetracking. Uh, it's not really the game's fault in that sense. The boss fights are super satisfying. Some of them really make you work for the win, so don't go into them thinking that you're gonna steamroll the bosses. A uh, big component of the game is the platforming, and once you get good at it, you're gonna love it. The grappling hook is super fun to go across the hook bugs, using the jetpack to scale buildings to get the lug locks boxes. Uh, it's, it's all just super fun. The gun plays great. The trick hole abilities for each gun really keeps combat fresh and exciting. And if you want to pick a favorite Gatlian, Creature is going to be it. He's a big lovable idiot. He shoots infant tr children out of himself, uh, and they climb on enemies and attack them. It's gross, it's fun, and it's super cool. All right, now we get into the fun factor section. Is the game fun? The game is flat out fun. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It, I would compare it to like a toned down goofy version of Ultra Kill as far as the gameplay goes. It took very little effort for me to sit down and really enjoy playing this game over and over again until I beat it. Which, to beat the game, I played about two hours per session, which I wasn't bored for any of that time, and it took me around 12 and a half hours to beat. So if you're not looking to get into a game that's gonna eat up, you know, the next six months of your free time, then High on Life is a fantastic choice. Another thing that makes it a fantastic choice is that it makes itself really accessible. And by that, I mean there's not a lot of convolutedness, complicated controls, or weird, funky mechanics. It's just a modern take on a boomer shooter. The objective is coming down to take this gun, go kill all these guys, and have fun. You can turn your brain off, and relaxing with this game for a couple hours every other day was just awesome for me now once you do beat this game replayability is always a big thing for me 
replayability in this game you may get some more achievements out of it if you missed out on the first run whenever you were first playing through the game but as far as having multiple unique playthroughs i don't think you're going to get much out of it i i found it a little disappointing that i couldn't go back to different boss fights to replay them because they're really fun and i really wanted to go back and fight them again but my small list of complaints about this game catches that as one of the biggest one or a story driven boomer shooter with a ton of comedy in it and you're into the rick and morty repetitive kind of dry style of humor this is the game for you i give this game an 8 out of 10 on my scale i would say it's definitely worth your money definitely worth your time you guys go play it if you don't want to play it watch a gameplay playthrough of it and tell me what you thought of it in the comments i had a great time playing it and i hope you guys do too and if you're interested, I stream randomly throughout the week. Currently, I'm working on a playthrough of A Plague Tale Requiem. So come on into my Discord. It's in the description. Catch me streaming right here on YouTube. If you want to hang out, if you don't, that's totally fine too. You guys have a good one. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you later.